Hello, and thank you for joining my session to get an AWS Storage SMEs guide to deploy, migrate, and scale faster. My name is Wally Akbari, and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect working at AWS. I specialize in data and storage, helping our customers across APJ on their journey to AWS. AWS offers many services in our storage portfolio across block, file, and object where these options help our customers across their different use cases. We launched new storage services and features over the past 12 months since I last presented a session at the 2021 AWS Summit, in particular, two new AWS file services. In this session, I'm going to focus on the recently launched AWS file services and also an existing one, where I'll provide my storage SME guidance and tips along the way which you can use to make optimal decisions going forward. Before we dive into the details, let's take a step back for a moment. Customers are constantly deploying new systems and applications to meet different requirements as their business grows and scales. From a simple point of view, a new system or application deployment could include high level tasks that I have shown. Firstly, you would research and design your system or application. Then build and test out your design. If all goes well, you plan and deploy or install your new system. Once you have deployed your system, you may have one or more states that you need to complete prior to being able to achieve steady state for your workload. For example, at the run state, you could be migrating data into your new system or integrating it or applying final config updates to further tweak your system before it's ready for steady state. Business and application requirements are constantly changing once you hit steady state after the initial deployment. There's a good chance you'll need to scale your system at some point to meet changing requirements. Imagine you ran out of capacity and suddenly had to extend capacity by tens of terabytes or increase performance throughput significantly ASAP. A traditional method could involve going back to the design board to figure out the fastest way to add more capacity or performance, then plan for it, schedule any downtime to deploy it, and work towards steady state again. A more optimal scaling flow could involve simply updating your system configuration online to achieve increased capacity or performance as required, when required, without having to spend all the time to figure out how to do it, order it, wait for it, and plan for any downtime for the actual upgrade. This optimal scaling method can save significant time and enable faster outcomes. This was just one example of how you could achieve faster outcomes using an optimal method. You can also achieve faster outcomes using automated deployments, optimal data migration patterns, to seamless integration. I will take you through these elements during this session. Now, system admins, project managers, and application owners share a common goal. They want to achieve things faster. The interesting part is, faster means different things for these different stakeholders. System admins want faster performance and capacity scaling capability but not the complexity. Project managers want to decrease project deployment times and also faster migrations. Application owners want faster deployments and also seamless integration. All these faster outcomes will help business owners to achieve business outcomes faster. There are a few hurdles that the stakeholders could encounter trying to achieve faster outcomes. Firstly, how fast can they deploy? How fast can they upskill? and who is going to manage it? Next, what's an easy and fast way to scale performance or capacity when their business needs it urgently? Lastly, how can they migrate and integrate data and also what tools should they use? Managing on-premise network attached storage is complex, costly, and difficult to scale. Customers need file storage for modernizing applications at their own pace. More and more customers are moving their file storage to AWS to improve agility, reduce costs, and scale faster. 
AWS offers the most complete file storage portfolio in the cloud, which customers can use to improve agility, reduce cost, and scale faster. The Amazon FSx family can help simplify your infrastructure with fully managed cloud file storage, powered by popular commercial and open source file systems. Amazon EFS provides customers with fully elastic, set, and forget serverless file storage for their modern applications. OK, now let's look at how AWS fully managed file services can help the different stakeholders. The Amazon FSx file service portfolio supports a broad spectrum of workloads, covering your different use cases. From general workloads like home directories and application or content drives, to high performance file systems powering HPC, big data analytics, and machine learning. In this session, we will focus on these three Amazon FSx fully managed file services. I will give a brief introduction for each of these services for those who are not familiar with the services. Then I'll get straight into SME guidance and tips on how you can achieve faster, focusing on deployment, management, scaling, and data migration. Firstly, Amazon FSx provides fully managed services. Fully managed means there's no hardware for you to manage. We look after the automatic patching and maintenance, and we also provide you with automated FSx backups that you can enable with a few clicks. This enables you to exercise and enjoy the art of not managing. Let's start with Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. Amazon FSx for Windows File Server is a fully managed AWS file service that provides SMB file shares. It's built on Windows Server, providing you with native Windows capabilities and integration with Microsoft Active Directory. It provides you with flexible price and performance options, such as multi-AZ or single AZ deployment models, configurable network throughput capacity, and SSD and HDD storage options. We can cost optimize even further by enabling data deduplication. You can spin up an FSx instance really easily in a matter of minutes. Then create one or more SMB file shares from the FSx instance and share them directly with your clients in AWS or back on premises. Let's look at John Holland Group, an Australian construction company. John Holland Group launched and ran a new environment on AWS within hours and actively migrated over 90 key applications within 48 hours. Wow, that pace and agility is quite amazing, enabling them to achieve outcomes faster. Now that we have gone through an overview of FSx for Windows File Server and seen how it can enable success for customers, I'm going to give you some SME guidance and tips. Firstly, you can deploy an FSx instance and share out multiple file shares from it to your different applications. One of the most common guidance items I discuss with customers includes, instead of deploying lots of very small FSx instances with varying levels of required performance, if applicable, look at deploying a larger single FSx instance, and then share out multiple file shares from it to your different applications. This FSx instance consolidation approach can simplify your architecture, where the larger FSx instance can potentially provide performance benefits to your different applications through its larger FSx baseline disk IOPS performance capability. For example, imagine you had to create 10 file shares and we're thinking of deploying 10 times 500 gigabyte SSD based FSx instances, where each FSx instance could provide 1500 baseline disk IOPS. Alternatively, you could deploy a single larger 5 terabyte FSx instance to meet your capacity requirements for these 10 shares, where this instance provides a larger baseline of 15,000 disk IOPS. Then create your 10 file shares from the instance, where your different file shares could benefit from the larger FSx instance and its higher IOPS performance capability. OK, let's switch gears. You can achieve faster outcomes through automation by leveraging Amazon FSx API as part of your CloudFormation environment deployment stacks. 
you can also continue to use PowerShell scripts or the FSX PowerShell commandlets we provide for your Windows file server level tasks. You can continue to use Windows Server native tools that you already know, for example, administering file shares. You can also obtain on-premise file caching capability for FSX for Windows File Server file shares by using the Amazon FSX File Gateway. You can deploy the FSX File Gateway on-premise to provide fast, low latency performance for frequently accessed FSX for Windows File Server file share data, enabling hybrid cloud architectures. When you deploy a FSX for Windows File Server instance, you select your storage type and provision storage capacity. The storage type and storage capacity you select translates to the baseline disk IOPS capability of the FSX instance. When you're calculating the capacity you need for your FSX instance, take note of the baseline disk IOPS it can provide to ensure it meets your requirements. Also, remember it's good practice to maintain 10 to 20% free capacity on a file system where you can monitor your FSX instance utilization using Amazon CloudWatch. Lastly, you can easily increase the storage capacity of your FSX instance online with a few clicks. When you deploy your FSX instance, you also select your FSX throughput capacity in terms of megabytes per second. Your selected throughput capacity value also translates to the amount of in-memory cache of your FSX instance. If your file share needs high caching capability for hot data, then you could work backwards from the FSX in-memory cache size to arrive at the throughput value to select. If you're unsure of what value to select, there's peace of mind that you can scale the throughput capacity online as your requirements change. Lastly, when you're standing up a POC to test the performance of the FSX instance, it's really important to deploy the FSX instance size to match as close to your real workload size. If you deploy a small FSX config compared to the actual configuration required, with the aim to save some cost for the performance testing, you may get non-optimal results that don't reflect the true performance capability of a right-sized FSX instance. You can migrate data onto your FSX for Windows file server file shares easily using Robocopy or using our AWS DataSync service to schedule, automate, and accelerate the data transfer. AWS DataSync can help you achieve faster and more seamless migrations as you don't have to worry about the complexities of any scripting or tooling. If you are going to deploy a HDD-based FSX for Windows file server instance as your final state, a tip that some customers have used is to actually deploy an SSD-based FSX instance first and perform your initial bulk data transfer to the SSD-based FSX instance instead of directly onto a HDD instance. This SSD instance will provide better performance compared to the HDD instance to speed up your initial bulk data transfer as part of your migration. Once your data migration is complete, simply take a FSX backup of your SSD-based FSX instance and restore it to a HDD-based FSX instance to meet your cost-optimized model. Then perform your final cutover from your source file share to your target HDD-based FSX instance and then remove the initial SSD FSX instance you used for the bulk seed part of the migration. During migrations, to get optimal speeds, remember to avoid running background tasks on your target FSX instance, such as data deduplication jobs and Microsoft volume shadow copies. You can enable these features after your data migration is complete. Now, Let's take a look at Amazon FSx for NetApp ONTAP. Amazon FSx for NetApp ONTAP is fully featured NetApp ONTAP with the simplicity, agility, and scalability of an AWS service. Customers love that the service provides a full, familiar ONTAP experience, enterprise features, plus all the benefits of AWS. It's the best of both worlds. This means you can leverage ONTAP's data management capabilities for your AWS workloads, such as its fast and space efficient local snapshots, SnapMirror replication, to its multi-protocol support for NFS, SMB, 
and iSCSI. The service comes out of the box with multi-AZ architecture. Multi-AZ mode allows you to easily deploy and consume it in your highly available architectures, saving you time and the complexity in trying to build out your own multi-AZ highly available storage capability. The service provides flexible price and performance options, from provisioned IOPS and configurable throughput capacity to storage options of high performance SSD or cost effective capacity storage. We can cost optimize even further by enabling on tap storage efficiencies of deduplication and compression. Finally, the service is accessible from a broad set of clients, such as Windows, Linux, and Mac. Let's look at eHealth New South Wales, who partner with health agencies and industry to provide a digitally enabled and integrated health system for patients, clinicians, and the New South Wales community. eHealth New South Wales seamlessly migrated their 1.3 petabytes of medical imaging data to FSX for NetApp ONTAP. That is a lot of data. The solution provided the reliability and scalability of an AWS fully managed service with the flexibility offered by NetApp ONTAP, reducing the operational management overhead for eHealth. Okay, let's go through some guidance and tips. You can use AWS native management tools like the AWS console, CLI, and also Amazon FSx API and CLI to deploy your FSx instances. You can use NetApp management tools such as NetApp Cloud Manager and ONTAP CLI and API to leverage ONTAP's data services. System admins can quickly and easily see FSx performance, capacity, and data efficiency values via Amazon CloudWatch metrics. Existing ONTAP users can run their applications in AWS without needing to change how they store or manage their data. And application owners and developers in particular can build and test their applications faster using FSx for NetApp ONTAP, being fully managed and leveraging ONTAP's data services, such as near instant ONTAP snapshots to enable faster testing using their data. You have two options to protect your data where both provide crash consistent and incremental backups. You can use automated FSx backups to create highly durable secondary copies of an entire volume. Or you can use ONTAP local snapshots, which enable near instant, fast local snapshot based backups, which also allow you to recover quickly from data from the snapshots. If you wanted a simple tick in the box approach, then use FSx backups to schedule a backup of your volume and pay per gigabyte backed up. If you have low RTO and RPO requirements, then you could leverage ONTAP's local snapshot capability. When you deploy an FSx for NetApp ONTAP instance, you provision your primary tier capacity, which is SSD based, and optimize for performance. If you need to store one petabyte of data, that doesn't mean you need one petabyte of SSD. You can have your data spread across the primary tier and also capacity tier. You can achieve storage efficiencies for your volumes by enabling auto tiering to the virtually unlimited elastic capacity pool tier, which is cost optimized for less frequently accessed colder data and automatically grows and shrinks as data is tiered to it. Remember, even if you are going to leverage the auto tiering policy of all for a volume, which means it will tier all the data to the capacity tier, Please note that you will still need to allow for 5 to 10% of the primary T to be used to store metadata related to the data. So you will need to size your SSD T accordingly to allow for metadata. Also, remember to take note of the FSx for NetApp ONTAP performance table when you're looking to size a solution. There are two elements, such as FSx throughput and SSD storage capacity, that can dictate your baseline performance. If you're an existing ONTAP customer, FSx for NetApp ONTAP also makes it easy for you to extend your workloads to the cloud where you can use SnapMirror for migrations. For the PMs out there, I have worked with customers who have used SnapMirror as the seamless and optimized method to migrate petabytes of on-premise ONTAP data to an FSx for NetApp ONTAP instance in AWS at multi-gigabit network speeds, helping them to achieve project outcomes faster.
We also see customers using SnapMirror or SnapVault for DR. If you have an on-prem ONTAP instance, you can also replicate your volumes to a separate FSX instance in your AWS account, enabling you with a cost-effective DR target option. Okay, let's take a look at FSX for OpenZFS. Amazon FSX for OpenZFS is a fully managed AWS file service that provides simple and powerful file shared storage that delivers ultra high speeds at a low cost and is accessible via the NFS protocol. FSX for OpenZFS is built on the popular open source OpenZFS file system and is also built on top of the latest AWS technologies, such as the AWS Graviton family of processors and also a new network transport protocol AWS developed to help deliver more consistent low latencies for our customers. In terms of low cost, you get high performance SSD storage for a low cost, where you get to choose how much performance or throughput you need for your workload to help you achieve your price and performance balance. We will discuss ultra high speeds in the next slide. And when you need to change your performance level, you can scale online with a few clicks. How awesome is that? You can leverage the advanced ZFS data management capabilities for working with data such as using thin provisioning and quotas, to being able to create, test, and roll back changes using ZFS snapshots or ZFS clones very quickly. FSx for OpenZFS helps deliver results faster with latencies of a few hundred microseconds, up to 1 million IOPS. Wow, that's a lot of IOPS. And throughput up to 12.5 gigabytes per second. These levels of available performance are important for scalable data-intensive workloads like data and analytics and machine learning. Here are things you may have heard about ZFS. It's complicated to set up and configure. It's difficult to tune for the best performance. It's hard to maintain and operate on an ongoing basis. And you need to be a ZFS expert to even get started. Now, I'm not here to convince you that these things aren't true. ZFS can be complex to manage. I am here to tell you that with FSx for OpenZFS, you don't need to worry about this complexity. You can launch and scale a ZFS file system in minutes. That doesn't sound complicated. You can leverage pre-tuned configurations and scale performance on demand. That makes tuning much easier. Automatic backups and maintenance and automatic replication and recovery helps you exercise the art of not managing. And lastly, you don't need to be a ZFS expert as FSx for OpenZFS provides a highly available NFS endpoint for you to simply consume. Here are some guidance and tips. Scale file system performance on demand from 16 megabytes per second up to 12.5 gigabytes per second to optimize cost and adapt to your changing business needs. Turn on compression to improve your storage efficiency, as well as your effective file system performance by up to 50%. Use AWS DataSync to easily migrate your existing self-managed ZFS or other Linux-based file service to FSx for OpenZFS. Okay, that was a lot of information to take in. So let's recap and summarize on how different stakeholders can achieve faster outcomes for their different requirements using Amazon FSx fully managed file services. One of the benefits of the Amazon FSx family of file services is that it provides customers with a choice of offerings to cater for their different business and application requirements. When you're starting your FSx journey, first look at your application requirements and also the skill sets you already have. Then start experimenting with the Amazon FSx service that lines up with your existing application architectures and or your skill sets. This can enable faster outcomes from a lift and shift approach and also allows you to reuse existing skill sets and application architecture patterns, thus enabling faster outcomes by avoiding reskilling or re-engineering. For example, if you're currently using NetApp ONTAP on-premises or other NAS appliances and have NAS experience, you could start experimenting with FSx for NetApp ONTAP. Finally, let's focus on the stakeholders. 
System admins can leverage the benefits of automation and fully managed capabilities of Amazon FSx and exercise the art of not managing to achieve faster outcomes when they need to deploy and manage. Application owners can leverage the agility and benefits that Amazon FSx provides of being able to scale performance and capacity for new and existing environments as they need it and when they need it to help them achieve faster outcomes. Lastly, project owners can leverage the seamless and optimized data migration options that are available to Amazon FSx file systems, enabling them to achieve simpler and faster migrations and decrease project timelines. You can get started with these links to learn more about Amazon FSx and also get hands-on with the services using the published hands-on workshops. To continue your cloud journey, please use these training resources. This brings us to the end of the session. Thank you for spending your time in viewing my session, and I hope that you can leverage the SME guidance and tips to help you deploy, migrate, and scale faster on your journey with AWS File Services, whilst you start enjoying the art of not managing. Happy building. We really value your feedback to help us improve our sessions in the future. I would appreciate if you could spend a minute to submit your ratings.